to the end of this exploration of Mendip. I'm using two charters for the ancient names. The first, that of a medieval forest boundary perambulation from 1298. And the second, a Saxon charter of, ba- of Banwell that includes the land of Booten Milkway. Yeah. The land above Milkway. And there is a barn called Milkway Barn today. Cheddar is also mentioned in uh, Chedra Cumbes, which means uh, Cheddar Coom. The barrow I showed you two videos ago is here, Stenberg, or Stenberg. I was also interested to learn that one of the lead pits somewhere here was called Stonyberg sometime in the post-medieval period. I found this out chatting to a local landowner. The dell it is in is today called Velvet Bottom, but I think in medieval times it was called Hair Clive or, or Hoare Cleaver, something like that, which means either grey or boundary cliff. I start this video uh, making my way up to two town fields where there's a Roman settlement. <laughs> the Roman amphitheatre for uh, Charter House. Charter House isn't a Roman name, uh, it's a medieval name. Um, but we know it probably began with Ved or Veb, I'll check it, I'll check that when I get back, um, from the uh, the markings on ingots. Uh, so yeah, that's interesting, but it's a very small um, um, amphitheatre, so there would have been, you know, uh, fights uh, going on in there for the, for people's amusement. So uh, I know I said earlier on they probably weren't slaves. You know, if they're providing entertainment, they probably weren't slaves. But of course, there was a this was a military area run by the military for the military, well for the empire. And uh, so yeah, there would have been slaves doing it. This this is entertainment for the for the legionaries. I'm getting tired now, I think I've overdone it recently. Uh, I need to get fit again. But um, actually that's the whole point of these walks is to get I'm on strict doctor's orders. I've lost two stone. Uh, I must exercise, I've got to sort my life out. But anyway, the um, I'm coming to the end. Now this is you might be able to see some of this this gorse here. This is prickly stuff it is. You see that? Anyway, yeah, I've got gorse all around me, and this uh, is part of the name around here. I had wondered, gorsey, um, what the gore stand, stand stood for. Um, but the, uh, it could mean um, a triangular piece of land, but there's loads of gorse around here, so yeah, a gorsey patch. Uh, EY at the end of things tends to suggest as long as it's not L-E-Y, L-E-Y means something else, but E-Y on the, after an S, for example, would suggest it's an island of some sort, and it can't... Uh, we can use islands in, in non-sea contexts. We can use them in uh, islands in rivers, uh, traffic islands, you know, all of this sort of stuff. So, um, so anyway, yeah, so big breeze just around the corner, but I might come back another day to, uh, to do some more work on that. Uh, it's a bit of a project and I'm running on my batteries down and, and myself and my equipment. So in this three-parter, have I proven continuity from the Iron Age to the present day, as I promised? 
Well, no, of course I haven't. I'm I'm mere YouTube hobo tramping the fields with a copy of Grundy Saxon Chartism under my arm. I hope I have, however, given you food for thought and hopefully inspired you to get out into your neighbouring countryside and find out about your local history. That's the end of this video. Uh, Ta-da for now.